so hi guys we are at day 12 of dynamic programming series and the problem that we are going to discuss is a lead code problem that is longest arithmetic sequence so most of you would be familiar with arithmetic sequence that what is a arithmetic sequence for those who don't know the arithmetic sequence i can tell you that the arithmetic sequence is a sequence of number in which the difference between any two consecutive number is same for all the consecutive numbers in the series so the description of the problem is that we have been given an array a of integers and we need to return the length of the longest arithmetic subsequence in a so let us understand this problem with the help of an example for more clarity so basically we are given an array this of elements like 1 7 10 15 27 and 29 so we can see that there is an arithmetic sequence of 1 15 and 29 how it is an arithmetic sequence because the difference between these two numbers 1 and 15 is 14 and the difference between 15 and 29 is 14 so the difference is common in the whole subsequence and hence it is an arithmetic subsequence so we need to find the length of the largest arithmetic subsequence in a so why i choose this problem for day 12 is because as far as we have concerned over this series uh, we have taken uh, quite a few number of steps to approach any dynamic programming problem that is first we make some ob observations and then we make a recursive solution and then we find the iterative solution to reduce time complexity and to apply dynamic programming but now we are one step ahead of this approach we will directly make some observation and try to find the iterative approach rather than going into recursive approach this is because uh, these type of problems are generally asked in interview section because these are quite easy problem to be asked in the dynamic programming sections rather than asking the traditional problems in dynamic programming sometimes an interviewer, interviewer asks the problems like these uh, to check the uh, attentiveness of the candidate so we are trying to approach this problem iteratively without going into recursive section so this problem tells us how by making some observations we can approach a problem iteratively so let us see what the observations that we can make from the given problem so let us understand example 2 of the problem we have been given a quite a few numbers 9 4 7 2 and 10 and we need to find the longest arithmetic subsequence so here we can see that the arithmetic sequence is 9 7 5 how because the difference is of minus 2 in this particular series as we can see 9 uh, 7 minus 9 is minus 2 and 5 minus 7 is minus 2 so it is a arithmetic sequence of common difference is minus 2 but uh, between any two consecutive number so let us now understand how we can approach these type of problems so first of all what we will do is we will make some observations regarding the number of se uh, series so we have been given that the difference might must be same for any two consecutive numbers so what we will do is we will list down the pairs of the number right so 4 minus 9 will be minus 5 the difference of 4 and minus 9 will be minus 5 the difference of 7 and uh, 9 will be minus 2 the difference of 2 and 9 will be minus 7 and the difference of 10 and 9 will be 1 so as we can see for a particular integer 9 i have list down all the differences of the remaining numbers from that particular number now i'll do the same thing with 4 because the sequence it is a subsequence it can start from anywhere so i need to list down all the differences of these numbers so 7 minus 4 is 3 now 2 minus 4 is minus 2 10 minus 4 is 6 okay so for 4 we have noted down all the differences now for 7 i'll uh, make the difference that is 2 minus 7 is minus 5 10 minus 7 is 3 and then uh, now what we can see is from this particular observation that we have listed down all the differences of all the numbers still this particular position and further we can do it for 2 also but here in this case what i have found is that 10 minus 7 is 3 so the sequence which is ending from 7 makes the difference 3 when it is subtracted from 10 right so the sequence is ending from 7 and now when the 7 is subtracted from 10 it makes the difference 3 so is there any particular sequence in which 7 is the last number and we can have difference 3 so we have found that when 7 is subtract uh, when 4 is subtracted from 7 we found 3 so this particular thing we can make down we can uh, note it down that whenever we are ending a particular series with a number we can list down that how much difference it is creating from that particular number and if we are matching that difference then we can increase the length of the series so i'll make sure that uh, this point is clear in the next slide so these are the observations that we can make out from the given example that there will be two dp state in the particular uh, problem 
फर्स्ट इज द डिफरेंस एंड द सेकेंड थिंग इज द लास्ट वैल्यू ऑफ द अर्थमेटिक प्रोग्रेशन विद दैट डिफरेंस सो वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू से इज दैट वी कैन मेक अ डी पी टू डी मैट्रिक्स ऑफ वैल्यू एंड डिफरेंस सो द वैल्यू पार्ट विल कंटेन द लास्ट वैल्यू ऑफ द डी पी सीरीज दैट वी आर टेकिंग लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल वी कैन से दैट द लास्ट वैल्यू वी आर टेकिंग इज सेवन सो सेवन मीन्स द नंबर ऑफ सीरीज विच आर एंडिंग फ्रॉम सेवन दिस मीन्स दैट द नंबर ऑफ सीरीज विच आर एंडिंग फ्रॉम सेवन and the second state that we can take in the dp is the difference so what the difference that we want from that particular series like if we are ending from 7 and we have a difference of 3 then how many number exist in the later examples like 10 exist right 10 exist because the last series the last number from which the series is ending is 7 and we want the difference should be 3 so is there any number possible in the later series of 7 Yes, a number ten is possible with the later in the later series because ten minus seven is three, and the last number ending in the particular series is seven. So we have a particular example in which we have a difference uh, prior to seven also that is seven minus four is also equals to three, and ten minus seven is also equals to three. So we are making two states in the DP that one state will contain of the last value of the arithmetic progression that we are taking, and the one state will contain the difference. of the particular uh, series that we are considering ke is there any number which exist of this particular difference and the last number ending of the particular ap series is this so is there any number yes then we'll increment it otherwise we'll go on further so if you're not clear with this particular example it is not a big deal we'll make to uh, we'll make to uh, make it clear in the coding section of okay so now let's jump into the coding section of this problem so basically we have been given an uh, function of longest arithmetic sequence and we have been provided a vector of array a uh, vector of vector of a which consist of the values of the sequence so basically what we are trying to do is that we are maintaining n as a variable which consist of the size of that particular array and what we are trying to do is if n is less than equal to 2 we are returning n this is because uh, there is at least two possible values of n if the uh, length of the vector is 1 that means there is no common difference and the uh, we'll return the longest sub uh, subsequence as 1 and if there are two values that means there is only single common difference and uh, which cannot be matched with any other common difference so we are returning simple 2 in this particular case so this is a uh, basic base case which is uh, you know quite some basic observations that we have made from this problem now what we can do is we are maintaining a vector of unordered map of integers and naming it as a dp of n so earlier we used to make a vector of vectors or 2d vector or a 2d in array for dp but here we are trying to make a vector of unordered map i'll explain you later in this video that why we are making unordered map in this particular case so for now let us only consider that we are making a vector 2d vector of unordered map we are initializing max length with 2 because there is uh, there will be at least two values which will have a common difference so the minimum value of uh, of the array can be 2 uh, we have we can have greater than 2 but we cannot have less than 2 because we we should have at least two values in that particular array which will have a common difference so the max length will be at least 2 now what we are doing is we are running two loops as i have discussed in the previous part of the video that we are taking a value and running second loop on all the later values in the present array so like for example we have considered the first value and then we are checking the difference with all the later values in the array so here similarly we are doing here also that first we are taking the ith value and then we are calculating the difference between the jth value and the ith value so ith value we are considering first and then we are calculating the difference of all the jth value which are later present above uh, uh, after that ith value so we are calculating the difference in that particular case now this is the important part that we need to understand for this particular problem that what we are doing is dp of i dot find difference is not equal to dp of i dot end so what we are doing is for that particular position i because for ith position r array which we are of which we are calculating the longest arithmetic subsequence that ith position is the last value that we got now we are checking for the different jth values so for that particular ith uh, value what we are doing is we are finding a difference that whether the difference exist for any particular value like we have calculated the difference of the jth value and ith value for any particular j or i values that we have calculated the difference now we are checking that for this ith value is there any difference existed in that unordered map if yes then we'll go to that particular difference and whatever value is stored at that dp of i and difference will increment it because we have found the difference one more time after that 
particular ith value so we have will take that value from that particular difference and we'll increment it and we'll store it this particular j of difference i hope you're getting it because earlier the difference must be have founded at another value and now for this particular jth value we have found the same difference and with the same ending value so what we'll do is we'll increment that difference which we have founded earlier at this particular present state so it is an important part of this particular question else what we'll do is if we have not found the difference in the map what we'll do is we'll store the answer as 2 because there will be at least two values one which is the ith value and the second one which is the jth value which will have a certain common difference so we'll store it as 2 and at last what we're doing is it is a very simple step that we are calculating the maximum length if there a maximum length is max uh, maximum than the pr uh, present length then we are storing it as maximum length of dp of j comma diff comma maximum length that we have till now so it is a very easy step and at last what we're doing is we're returning the max length so I think it is a very easy problem to get but what we have tried to show in this problem is that we are not uh, taking this problem recursively but rather jumping from the observation to iterative solution. This is because in the interview if the interview asked you this problem then you need to have a certain kind of ability to develop a solution from the observations that you can make. If you do it recursively then you might get stuck on some stage at this particular problem but if you see the observations and if you see the difference and what we are trying to do and what we are trying to achieve in this particular problem then it becomes quite easy to get you, to the, uh, get you through the DP solution. So that is it for day 12 and the concepts that we have learned today is how to think of states in DP. So it is very important to get an understanding of what are states and how we can approach the problem of states in dynamic programming and the second thing is what how we can use the optimal substructure with memoization so how we are using the memory and how we are doing the optimal substructure in the particular problem so this is the topic that we have learned thoroughly in this uh, particular dp series but the states are quite important uh, concepts in dp so that we have learned today and if you have any doubts regarding the video and if you think that there is any other more optimized solution and what else we can do so you can always comment down in the uh, comment section of the given video and you can also provide us your doubts on the email that we have provided in the description and you can always contact us through the uh, social networking links that we have provided in the description so that's it please do subscribe like and share